I can remember uh, attending all black school, Excelsior Elementary School in Big Sandy. And uh, one of the things that we, we realized is that there was a difference uh, in the school, the, the white school versus the black school. And we, we were cognizant of this because there was a difference in facilities. It always bothered me about uh, teachers needing workbooks. We didn't even have all of the books that we needed at the particular time, and we never did get new books. We always got used books at our school. And then uh, we would issue the books out and look at the neighbor in the community and where two, two or three would live close together, where well, we would give them a math book where they could study together. And I talked to Ms. Robertson, I said, now we are teaching hell, haven't even got in the soap. <laughs> We're teaching hell, then we have a water bucket, and then we all drinking out of the same cup, uh, the same glass and things like that. At the white school, there were swings and slides and all these type of things, and we only had we didn't have anything for a while until the PTA finally raised enough money to get us a merry-go-round. Each teacher had to carry a load of two classes in a classroom. One of the things that we rem I remember vividly is the fact that we had probably the worst buses that you could that you could have. Uh, we didn't have a new bus. In fact, in fact, we were once told that you could not heat a school bus. Uh, our buses never had heat on, and they were always cold, and and uh, a lot of times they wouldn't, they, they broken down, down right, yeah. they break down, mm -hmm. you know, somebody have to come pick you up, you break down on the road, and sometimes you'd have to push the bus off to get it started. So, so that was a big difference, but that's how we got to school, we, we were bused in. And in this school, we did not have a telephone or anything, had an extension from my house to the school. and. That's the way it was operating. And we did not have a janitor there in the school. I was Johnson, and each teacher was responsible for taking care of their own room. You know, Fort Hawkins had a nice high school. Mm -hmm. You know, because one of the things different with Hawkins is that they they had money, and mm -hmm. the, the all money, and, mm -hmm. and black. Yeah, but that was black school. They had new buses. We were blessed with a principal that loved to go out and and contact and get the best, like for for us as a black school, T. H. Burden, and we had. I would say a good school. We had good buildings. We had good buses to ride in. We had good teachers. I mean, they were well trained. Mm -hmm. Our school was nice. Our school was very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, Mr. Burden was the type of person and employed the type of uh, personnel in the community who would have to take care of our school. Our school, as simple and meager as it was, was always neat, always clean. We had good books, and we had a good school, a good gym, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So at that time, we thought we were probably rich. <laughs> We moved to the other side of, of uh, the place where our original school was to what we had known as South Side High School. Well, it didn't take <laughs> much to figure out that this is what they're doing, that they're getting ready for integration, you know.
we had the opportunity to move over to the white school. Mm -hmm. But we really didn't want to go in the white school. They had just built us a new school. They told us that's what the federal government wanted us to do. They were, we was integrating and going to school with the white and uh, we had to do it. But they gave us an option the first year. What they did, they gave us a choice, the students a choice, wrote letters to the parents and told them they could go to the white school if they wanted to the mm -hmm. that year. Mm -hmm. You had your choice. And we had quite a few black kids that went from that year to the white school. Mm -hmm. uh, I stayed at Southside, uh, I believe it was one year or two, and then went to the Hawkins High School, which was the white school. And then they moved me for an hour, I believe, over to the Hawkins High School for one hour to teach typing. One thing I never did do, I never did go to the lounge to meet people. I always stayed uh, in my room, come to my room, and if I had some papers to work, run off and all, I would do that during my class period. Because at one time, I can recall in going in there, I went in there and they were all in there I don't think school had started. It was early that morning. And as soon as I got in there, everybody stopped talking. I said, hmm. And just like that, I said, sure, it's quiet. I said, I fixed the lead. Just like that, I left. And so when I left, <laughs> I lied to myself. I said, hmm. They were either talking about me or uh, someone else. And so I said, I won't be going. Basically, Hawkins is a good community, and there was good rapport uh, among the races. So there were no incidents of violence, to my knowledge. I can't recall any. So they just announced integration, and there were some meetings prior to that to prepare the community for the integration. So it was a smooth integration. The main discussion was that of getting along with each other and also supporting each other in the endeavor to make it a tr uh, smooth transition. Mm -hmm. That was done a, a lot in part through the parent-teacher association groups because in both of the schools the, that was a strong uh, supporting body for the Hawkins Colored High School, for the Falk Hawkins uh, School, and then as we moved into integration, the parent-teacher group has always been strong here in Hawkins. In fact, I can remember vividly at about Hawkins High, that's where we went to school, high school, where uh, the principal then, Mr. T.H. Burton, called yeah. us in the office, the students from Big Sandy, and we couldn't imagine why he wanted us all in the office. And this was around the end of the school year, okay, and around April or 1st of May, and we went in his office, and I never will forget the look on his face and the look on our faces when he says, well, I have some, some news that I got to share with y'all. Uh, we and I hate to lose y'all, but in, this, in the fall, y'all have to go back to Big Sandy. And I mean, we were just speechless. We had several meetings at the school before we integrated. You know, the teachers would tell us, you know, now next year we're going to integrate. We will, you all will be in a white at the white school mm -hmm. and you know we want you all to go over there and don't be acting up and you know just have some intelligence and and all of that it was drilled into us so the integration uh, you know has come into this area now and it is mandated the federal government the federal government is mm -hmm. mandated that you all yeah you know you gotta gotta go to school together and uh we didn't want to at that time this was 1965 mm -hmm. and uh but we had to I was always treated fairly, so I didn't have any fear with uh, going to school with the white because we'd, I'd played with them during the summer uh, 
and we had, you know, nice time, and uh, they didn't seem like they was prejudiced, and we wasn't either. We didn't even know what prejudice was at that time because we was all having fun. We were not afraid, you know, to be with the white people. It wasn't you know, physical. We, no, no, mm -hmm. it wasn't physical. Not that we were fit for it, that they were going to do something to us mm -hmm. physically, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Even though some of our parents were afraid of that because they know, you know, they yeah. wouldn't figure that, you know, we, they may try to go up there and take advantage of them because just a few of you mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, there's a great number of them. Mm -hmm. But we were not really afraid of that. We just hated to leave our friends mm -hmm. that we had been going to mm -hmm. high school with all those years. But uh, I guess this not knowing exactly what it was going to be. I remember the first time going, you know, I guess they had been told, you know, to be nice and then we all got together in the auditorium and then you all went, we all went like this, it was the sophomores, we all got together white and black and mm -hmm. went together. And from there, you know, everyone was nice, you know, everyone was nice. There was a few little looks and a few little things, but mm -hmm. basically it was nice. Seemed like some of the white people went out of their way to be nice to us. When we first integrated, I just didn't know if I could, uh, you know, make the grade, what I was to say, uh, and to keep up. But uh, after I got into school and, and we went to classes together and, and it, you know, classes got started, I found out that uh, we were all on the same level, just about, you know. After integration, I had a kid from my school, when they began to mix with the other kids, uh, all except a few, but just about all of our kids from the black school was on the honor roll in the white school. If I needed help with a problem, mm -hmm. the teacher was always willing to help me and some of the other blacks that were in there. I can't see any differences in that. We mixed well together in the classroom and whatnot, but it was amazing how at lunchtime, mm -hmm. during the lunch period, you know, mm -hmm. we all seemed to migrate you know, we, we would all, the blacks would be in one area and the whites in one area. Nobody told us to do that. Mm. But, you know, that's just the way it is, mm. you know. The only thing that I noticed right at first, I mean, even though we were all together, we seemed to be kind of segregated at first. Then as they become uh, closer friends and all, then they, uh, they had friends, you know, both the black and white. We participated in sports together and uh, on football, and we were totally integrated in the locker rooms and the showers and, and this, that, and the other. Yeah, I was concerned as to how <coughs> the two races would meld into a team. How would uh, they fit together? Mm -hmm. so there's going to be some black athletes. There's going to be some white athletes. Will they, will we have teamwork or not? That's one thing that uh, our coaches instilled in us to uh, work as a team and with black and white working together and, and in order to win anything, you're going to have to do it together because one person couldn't do it by himself or one, uh, the black person could do it and the white person could do it. So we had to work together as a team and that's what he instilled in us. And, uh, we didn't, I didn't have any problem with it. We went to track meets every spring, and on a couple of occasions, in making arrangements for the noon meal for our athletes, the proprietor would ask, do you have any blacks? And of course, I did have, and I said, uh, sure. He said, we're not going to feed you. And I said, well, I'm sorry about that. And we go to another place in the same town. They readily accept us. I never will forget uh, one Evening after football practice, Coach <clears throat> Brand was taking uh, several of the boys home that lived out in the area where we lived. Uh, it was uh, me and my cousin, and it was, uh, uh, I think, a couple of the uh, white boys. And we decided it was hot, we were thirsty, we were hungry, and we 
he decided to go to Bennett's Cafe, uh -oh. right there in Big Sandy. And, uh, and he says, let's go in and get some hamburgers and some meat. I'm, I'm, I'll pay for it. And he says, it's okay. Now, we knew we had never gone in the front of Bennett's Cafe before, but this is integration. So all this has changed. So we went in, <coughs> we sat down. He came over, took our order, and went in the back, turned in the order. And we were sitting there. I said, hey, hey this integration's all right, you know? And, uh, and we heard somebody say, there's a place in the back for you boys. Now, there were about four boys, four or five boys sitting there, but there's only two black boys. Mm -hmm. And we immediately knew who he was talking about. Mm -hmm. So we turned around and we looked. And we walked back to where he was pointing. There's a place in the back. But it was in the back. It was in the kitchen area where blacks had always been, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, and never will forget, we said, no thank you. And we walked out, left our orders, you know, and sat on the outside. Now, the only thing that bothered me about the whole incident, I guess, to this day, is the fact that the coach who carried us in there, after he found out that we were not all able to eat together, they stayed in there. And they, they, had, ate? They, they ate their, their hamburgers, and then they came out, and we waited outside for them. And when he got in the car, he apologized to us and said, well, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was like this. We won't ever come here again. And he didn't get carried out again. But, but, but this is, the, this is the, 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 the main point is that after three months, this was in September when that happened, and at the end of the uh, ball season, football season in November, the proprietor, Bennett, he gave a banquet for all the football boys, because we had won five games mm -hmm. that year. And even before that, they hadn't won any, or maybe <laughs> one. And, and he wanted to show his appreciation to the team, because mm -hmm. they won five games out of ten. And, and he says, he came to the school, and I will forget, he says, we're going to have a banquet for, for you football boys. And he made a point to tell us, he says, and we're going to all eat together. And that broke down segregation in his cafe. The fact that there were some outstanding athletes from the colored school who immediately fit into the athletic program helped integration. At that time, you know, we had blacks on the football team, basketball team, we ran track, we did all of that, but we never had any, the girls were the cheerleaders, mm -hmm. of the black girls. Mm -hmm. I had three boys in high school and they were playing football. And, and one of the boys told me, says, Mama, we need a black cheerleader. I said, well, what are you going to do about it? He said, we're not going to play no football. I said, this, you sure this is what you want? Yes, sir. I said, well, I'll back you. I'll be here to back, my, lose my job, but I'll back you. So, Mr. Um, more, my principal came to me and asked me, uh, said, Ms. Burns, say your boys are getting into a lot of trouble. I said, what kind of trouble? I, they are not going to play in the football, not going to play on the I said, you call that trouble? I says, just because they wanted a black cheerleader, I want some black cheerleader. I says, no, they're not getting in any trouble. So they got some black cheerleaders. Now, one of the things they did prior to, and I think they probably knew, may, have, may have known this was coming, they, 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 they had stopped having proms. I think the year or so <laughs> before we, we integrate. I'm not sure whether it's prom or senior trip, but one was stopped, mm -hmm. afraid, you know, some problem mm -hmm. might exist. Mm -hmm. There was one ugly incident that did happen at the school, and I won't go into it all the way, but it was told that this black boy had asked a white girl to go to the prom, jokingly. And she had two brothers that attended the school. And she went and told them about it, and they beat the guy up real bad. Mm -hmm. When we integrated, we had a principle that, you know, mm -hmm. could keep things in line. And then, the, the 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 white parents had really kind of schooled their children on things, and that was the 
that was the that was the re the 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 those were the parents then, you know. And they 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 told their children, don't call, don't say nigger. And they 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 told their children to obey the teachers, and they were they were just, you know, and and they, and that that helped a lot. The colored students were readily accepted, and many of them were excellent students and well behaved. So, really, I suppose our community. <coughs> could said to be uh, integrated without any any friction, shall I say. The only thing that we talked about and we prayed about it, when we do integrate, we want to do a good job. We want to prove, we know we can. All we want is a chance to do and have a good working relationship and we can do the job. They gave everybody a job. Mm -hmm. And they had more teachers than they had jobs. But the first year, they did not let anyone go, but they had them to understand and, and told them, you know, to see if you can find you another job for the next year. I remember working in the classroom, and it was the fourth grade, and Mrs. Green and I, Miss Green was white and I was black, and we worked in the fourth grade together. Mm -hmm. We had the same room. I don't know how we did it, but that's the way it was. Well, one thing they did, and I, I don't know why, because I wasn't in the upper, <laughs> upper channels of knowing why, but they didn't want the black teachers to have a home room, and so they were not given a home room. And so for two periods during the day, I moved out, and they came into my room and taught some of the minor subjects because they thought, I guess, the ones in charge, that it would go smoother that way. But um, that was the unfair, that was the most unfair thing that I saw. I had to take a reading class. I was a remedial reading teacher. And what was depressing to me was that I was in a room up over the auditorium <laughs> where, where you look out over the auditorium and it, this door was closed all day long. They moved all of the black teachers and put us in different areas, uh, like in the elementary, middle school, and in high school. That next year, they started letting them go, saying they had too many teachers. And so what happened? The blacks were the first to go. And then when, you know, we would complain about it and all, but, you know, it was just too, too many teachers, they claim. But it, it went on down to nothing really hardly. We just a few blacks, the rest of them white. The high school teachers that I had, you know, the black teachers made an indelible impact, positive impact uh, on, on my life. Uh, because when we went to Big Sandy, we didn't have any black teachers. Mm -hmm. you know, that was the end of our contact with black teachers when we went to Big Sandy High because they were all, all uh, white. Uh, there weren't any real big issues, mm -hmm. but there were concerns and there were things that happened that we really had to try to settle and try to do something about or uh, else it could have caused rifts in the community as well as in the school. Basically, your principals became, they gave them some type of administrative title, mm -hmm. and they lost their principalships, you know, mm -hmm. in, in all of, basically all of the schools. 
and uh, some of the teachers were displaced, especially some of the older ones that had been there for mm -hmm. some time. Mm -hmm. And so from a standpoint of that, the, the black teachers did get, uh, they, they got a bad deal in that, in integration, I think. Tom Burton was principal of the colored school, and he was largely responsible for the smooth integration of the two schools. He was an intelligent man and knew, had great skill in handling people. Like our principal, Mr. Burton, he was a principal at the school, but when he, when they were integrated, he went over to the white school, but he was uh, just an administrator. He wasn't uh, a principal anymore, you know. They took Mr. Burton and made him assistant superintendent, but he was down in the, had an office in the basement of the white school, mm. in a gymnasium. And, uh, and, and, and he took care of the books and all the paper, Dr. Harmon's paperwork, and they called him assistant superintendent. And, and he, he didn't work a year there, if my memory serves me right, and he died. Mm. The white teachers wanted all of the smart black kids in their room. And uh, that's the only thing they was interested in, that real bright child. But if the child was slow, something like that, they, you know, they would bypass, want to bypass that child. And we had, we, we, we had, I, I had trouble along the line, you know, because to send that kid out in the morning to play basketball and things like that. And so, it just wasn't, you know, it just wasn't good for that slow student. Mm -hmm. with, with, with my white principal, I felt much more at ease. And I remember when Martin Luther King was killed and uh, the student, black students went to the flag and they sang the song, We Shall Overcome. He did not interrupt them, he just let them sing it until they got through and came back to class. And and he was just the one to integrate, the, you know. Mm -hmm. I can remember the first grade teacher, one of the first grade teachers. She would place all the black kids in the back and she would ignore those kids and she would teach to the white kids. And they were just, uh, they were just there. I, I worked hard to teach the, the blacks because I was so afraid I wouldn't be there. But I think I really I leaned more that way so I wouldn't feel like I might not be there. later in the uh, 70s into the early 80s mm -hmm. and then on into the mid 80s yes it did start to change uh, the children started playing together more having funsy time together and I think that athletics though made it happen even more mm -hmm. because uh, these athletes were able to they knew they had to play together in order to compete together in order to have a unit of a team together in order to win together. My kids always wanted to go and participate in everything that they could. And uh, every time they have a different activities at school or parties or whatever, they were all there and uh, most of their friends were white uh, kids and, and they got along great. I think there was uh, uh, an idea of trying to work and, and get a better percentage, you know of black teachers into our school system. We, we got, uh, after one principal retired, we hired Dr. Bowie for our elementary principal. 
I don't know what year that he came, but we had a, a black band director for around 20 years here. And, uh, of course, presently they have a black high school principal. Principal, yes. We had a good school system in spite of. We had teachers who were dedicated and who were committed. Um, but I think it allowed more access to some of the things that, we that the students did not have. And in that way, I think it helped. I really think it helped. I can't, well, I, I had talked with a lot of parents before we integrated. A lot of parents were against it. But I thought it was a big help to the black kids, the black community, because of the uh, things that we would receive, what our kids would, could get if they integrated, what that they could not get if we were not integrated. To let some of the white people know that we were just as good as they were. Mm -hmm. We were just as good as they were, you know. We didn't have to back up anymore. We didn't have to back up to them anymore. And to me, that was an accomplishment. They could not tell us, nigga, go home, or mm -hmm. nigga, you can't come in here, or anything. And I think that was a big accomplishment. I think we lost something in terms of probably some of the values that we had as, as uh, you know, people of color. The respect of uh, our black kids was uh, just lost. We. Our black kids used to would, um, hold the door open for you. If a teacher was coming up and they saw that teacher, they would stand there and hold that door until that teacher got through that door and let that teacher in. Uh-huh, uh-uh, all of that started then. As far as blacks were concerned, I think that it hurt us. I think that the black students started to see that, well, white kids don't have to do this or they can get away with doing this and nothing is done to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, why should I? Well, I think they lost that close relationship between student and teacher. Um, and sometimes students were reluctant to confide in some of the white teachers when they were having problems. Uh, to me, they gained uh, experience of dealing with uh, students on air, uh, you know, from different racial points of view. And to me, that would be a strong point because, uh, you know, after you would have a chance to actually deal with students on, from a different background level, there should be some gain in that. My friends were just multiple, multiple. Mm -hmm. Because with the integration, I gained friends that I didn't, didn't have. Mm -hmm. well, I got a chance to do some things at the white school that I wasn't going to be able to do at the, at the black school. And that was to uh, learn how to, to uh, associate with different people, you know, and to get along with everybody and uh, be as a team. It's going to be better for the colored people. It's going to help the whites see that another race has ability, athletic ability, and academic ability. And it help to see that there's basically no difference in the races. People are really people wherever you find them and that really many of the myths and the things that we had uh, about uh, different uh, races is not true and of course uh, you know just because it's different that it's no, none is inferior or superior. <laughs>